Hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff. It's First Impressions Day again and we're looking at this. The CSM Minerva Armoured Car. It's a Belgian armoured car from World War I. Yes, welcome back to Model Kit Stuff, another first impressions um, and another CSM kit. So recently we did a couple of their 1 to 32 scale aircraft. We even did a comparison with the wingnut wings to see how they, they um, compared. And you know what? I really, really fell in love with those kits. So they do some other stuff. They do armored cars. They do 1 to 48 scale aircraft. And I wanted to check out the armored cars. So I've purchased this one directly from them and, and their website. Um, and uh, what we've got here is something that I thought was a little bit different to some of the mass produced kits that you see from uh, uh, Mini Art and others that cover um, the First World War. Um, I don't think anyone else makes this uh, in this scale at least. This is 1 to 35 scale. Um, so it's a really interesting kit. So without further ado, let's have a look at it. So the, the box is the standard CSM format. You've got the logo, you've got some nice little technical drawings there, including one of the engines. So that gives us hope that we've got a full engine in there. Uh, and it gives you a feel that we've got something that is gonna be maybe a technical kit. We've got a lovely piece of artwork on here showing the vehicle um, in use in what looks like the, the winter time on the front on or near the front lines i guess um uh, in its sort of gray uh colors now i think this is a digital uh drawing because it has that sort of metalized mottle effect and but i think the artwork is actually really nice um it tells us at the bottom it's a minerva armored car um so they were used quite extensively is my understanding but i don't know much about them um, when we uh, look at the box, let me just move that out of the way. Um, on this edge, we've got um, contents of the box. It says box contains a multimedia unassembled scale model kit. Um, and we've got contact details. The two ends are the same and basically emulate what's on the top of the box. And then here we've got our four paint options. So so we have a 1914 version, which is the one I think we see uh, on the top there. Um, we have a camouflage version from 1916. Um, we have a captured 1914 one, which you can see it's got a different, uh, different gun on there uh, and obviously German markings. And then we've got a post-war police version, um, which is really interesting. And that gives you um, a little bit more options with the brass, I think, by the looks of it. Or maybe not, I might be making that up, but it's a darker grey. So four very distinct uh, different, I mean, that's probably what you'd usually see. Um, but that is interesting as well, and uh, that could be quite a challenge to do that. Interesting. Right, as always with a CSM kit, what we've seen so far is just the outer packaging because on the inside... You've got this really nice inner box, which has this sticker on, gives you a technical drawing, um, and tells us that the kit number is 35004. I'm guessing that is 35 scale kit number four. Um, so, yeah, really nicely laid out and gives you a feel of quality, uh, as we've said before. And though it says kit number four, this was a new tool in 2020, so it's a relatively recent kit. Let's take a look inside. Now, as we open up the box, we can see we've got our instructions, which um, look like a manual from the time. And actually, that's a hefty old build manual. So put that to one side. Um, we've got a bag with wheels in. Whoa, look at that. Well, we'll have a closer look in a minute. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Um, Two more sprues. This there are identical sprues in that bag. Uh, we've got clear parts. Two sprues. Two separate bags. 
one sprue in that bag, one sprue in that bag, and one sprue in that bag. So, yeah, let's have a look at the instructions first. So, our instruction manual is um, A4 portrait stapled, um, and the front cover, um, I'm not sure if it's thick gauge paper or thin gauge card, but it feels like card. Um, and it's got this lovely sort of period feel to it, um, which has all this stuff um, written here in, in what I'm guessing is uh, in uh, Belgian. Um, then when we open it up, um, we've got these nice period feel pages with dark edges and stuff. So it feels like a document. Um, and it tells us a little bit of history. So starting with the foundation of the Minerva company um, in 1895, based in Antwerp. Um, and then so it goes on. Um, and, you know, it talks about them being sold, uh, their relationship with Rolls-Royce and so on. Um, cool, there's quite a bit of history. Let's just see. So it goes on with some nice period pictures as well. You can see the size of the vehicle when you can see people stood in them. Um, not a lot of protection there, is there? And so it goes on. And so it goes on. Wow. That is an in-depth history. So they break the history down and talk about different aspects. Then they talk about after the war. Then they talk about markings. Um, and then they give you a bibliography as well. So 16 pages of history. Yeah. That means they've done loads of research behind this. And it gives you a really comfortable, warm feeling that what you're about to enter into is a project that's been very, very well thought through. Um, so, whereas other kits that you buy, they have no history these days. Ravel, who decided to drop it because it was too much like hard work. That's their, their words. Um, you know, it doesn't give you any confidence about the, the, the quality and attention to detail in the research of it. So, this really already makes me think, wow, I've got something special. And I've not actually looked at the instructions yet or the parts. Right, then we start with um, a sprue map, um, and there's a little note there that says read the instructions carefully, so on. Um, and we've got the key there, um, so a fairly simple key compared to some companies. Um, and then we've got um, one, two, three, four, five different sprues, but it says um, two of each, so we'll have four of those, two of those, um, yeah, and that's it. And then we've got the two clear parts. Then there's an image of the decal sheet. Um, and yeah, you can't see the numbers on this, so you can't cross-reference the numbers. Um, but it is a good way of just quickly visualising that you've got everything you want in your kit before you stash it. And you can always then contact them if there's an issue. Then below we've got our colour chart. So we've got what there, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18 colours. Um, they're, they're not using a, a brand, but they are telling you what it is. So aluminium, copper, bakelite, um, rubber light, um, so on and so forth. So, yeah, um, that's really interesting, grass green. So you probably want to go through the uh, paint option and decide what you're doing uh, and then go through the instructions and cross out any paints you don't need. Right, so step one, it says here, um, installing gearbox into gearbox frame, uh, check figure 11 for color reference. So let's have a look, where's figure 11, eight, nine, Those are steps. Where's the figure 11? Step, 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 step. Figure 8, figure 9. Figure 10. F 
figure 11 so there's our color references okay so a little bit of ducking and diving to go but okay um, step two uh, is building up the radiator step three um, in installing both side rails so that's the start of our chassis um, putting the radiator in and a cross member at the back end making it all square um, and then we're installing the front cross tube rear cross member and steering gear box with column so yeah and you can see what it is you're installing because they're highlighted in this blue color um, so that's really nice and clear um, so that, and then we've got the front uh, suspension going on oh sorry the rear cantilever springs there you go um, then we're clearly building the engine so lovely we've got a full detailed engine that's really nice to see um, so uh, we're it's a two half main uh, engine block uh, and then we're adding to it uh, lots of individual pipes and uh, frames the fan fan belts and stuff engine wiring from the spark plugs to the magneto through the wire housing so I don't think there was nothing referencing wire so this you'd have to scratch build so maybe that's what's meant by the red although it doesn't say in the key um what that means so we're sort of working that out as we go so i i think all of those need to be scratch built if you want to um so it depends on whether you're going to show the engine or not and whether you feel competent in doing it i guess um then we're showing the engine colors um so yeah very nice very nice that looks lovely actually um then we're carrying on with the engine uh, by installing it into the radiator uh, and it gives you two views of where the hoses fit up so that's uh, that's really nice um, you can, and they've taken away the support member there so you can see clearly what's going on so that's lovely um, then we're uh, building up the wooden floor um, so we've got pedals going on and the driver's seat notice there's no back Wow, I mean, he's just basically sat on a cushion. That's um, basic, isn't it? Um, and then we're building up the fuel tank, which they've blown up there, and then you see that being installed um, into the bottom there. That's well thought through as well, I think. Um, installation of the front axle, um, and then you can see the track rod being put on there separate, and we've got uh, paint references for those uh, throughout as we go. Um, I missed that but there seems to be a paint option so I'm guessing that's painted in the grey or painted in the wood or I might paint the wood then paint the grey and scuff it up um, I quite like doing that I've done that on se several vehicles most recently on the uh, ICM fire truck if you want to see how that worked um, then we've got um, handbrakes and uh, the steering arm there um, we're putting in the rear axle so if it sounds like I'm quite knowledgeable when usually I don't that's because they're actually telling you what all of this is so that's perfect um, you, you can learn a lot just from going through these instructions um, and then we've got the uh, exhaust uh, going in uh, with its uh, muffler there um, and again showing you close-ups of the connection points because you can't see it there so they flip it around and blow it up for you so you can see just how that's connecting in uh, to the manifold. Lovely. Right, step 15 now, and we're inst installing the um, uh, brackets for the running boards and the uh, mud guards. And this is the first time that I'm thinking, questioning whether this is the right time to do it. My experience is these things are quite delicate. They stick out, you're gonna catch them. Um, so, and as we look at this, you know, at step 27, we still haven't put those mud guards on and they're still quite accessible. So um, as I look ahead on the instructions, I don't see any need to put them on just yet. Um, but we can see we're clearly building up the um, sides of the body um, and it's asking us to remove some hatch hinge. Um, depending on what marking option you're going for. 
Um, but you can see there's going to be some lovely detail on the inside as well as the exterior. Remove the pins for the later version. Uh, then we've got some decals going on. So I guess that's the driver's uh, decals. You've got an option. Um, doesn't tell you what the option relates to, but you've got two different dials that you can use. Oh, one is, one is, uh, this is really nice. What a lovely thought. It's the same dial, but one is with revs on and one is idling. So if, it, if you're modeling it stationary, brilliant, but if you're gonna put figures in and show it bombing across the countryside, you can actually show that on the dial. What attention to detail is that? That's fabulous. See, it's the tiny, tiny little things that can make all the difference, and that is one of them. Really love that, absolutely love that. Anyway, carrying on, uh, we're putting the uh, front part of the bodywork on there, which also acts as your, your firewall against the engine. Um, and you can see the other side and the uh, slab sides of the engine housing. So uh, nice and cheap to make um, because with the exception of the back there and this, this little bulge, everything else is fairly slab sided. So uh, a good, good way of uh, manufacturing the vehicle. Um, then we've got remove the marking page 29 to 31, 33 and 35. So not quite sure what it means by that 29 to 31 all right so it depends on what paint option you're doing whether you've got that on or not okay um, then we're building up the spare tire which is four parts so that's interesting uh, that needs to go together really well otherwise you've got a fair amount of clean up to do um, and then there's um, like a framework that we're building up to place that in um, and then we're putting on the the rear mud guards um, and the backing plate step 27 so really involved build surprising isn't it because it didn't look like a lot of parts when we when we took it out um, then we've got our um, gun mount going in um, so you want to be painting that up and weathering it and chipping it and, and really getting it to, to sing before you put that in there. Um, and that'll look stunning. Um, then you've got the mud guards going on. And um, depending on which version, you might have to trim those last bits off. Um, so does that mean you don't put that bracket on for that version? Probably. Um, and again, it's showing you close-ups of the bracket location points when you put it in. Um, and then you've got options depending on your paint markings again with all these stowage boxes. Um, yeah, and uh, another stowage box on the other side on the running board. Um, and then at step 32, we're installing the headlights. So going back to my comment on these brackets... I don't see why you'd be installing them. I, I'd be doing them after this, I think. I'd be doing it at about step 26 point. Because uh, then step 27, you're putting that on, and then you're putting this on. So, yeah. Right. Headlights. Um, got a little modification to do, and then it goes on to the uh, mounting brackets. Um, then we've got the um, bonnet covers going on. Um, then we've got the Maxim machine gun um, assembly, which is basically the handles and the uh, uh, swivel bracket. Um, then we're painting it, um, so a combination of brass and gun metal. Uh, installing it and then installing the shield now that's used on the german version um it's a different gun i think with a smaller shield on the uh other version oh this page for the german capture minerva only right okay i'd missed that i'd missed that um so the, ah right so we skip all of that if you're not doing the german captured version um and then we've got uh, an early version uh, engine cover. See the big gaps there? That's interesting. 
um, and then a late cam uh, for the camouflaged and the uh, police version uh, we have this uh, wider cover but still with massive gaps I wonder what why they did that that's really interesting um, then we're building up the headlamps um, so um, multiple parts uh, it says acetylene gas lamp wow um, putting the bracket on so that's a, the big brass lamp that you see at the front then we've got the vision port doors going on the radiator doors going on then we're mounting the machine gun and it, its um, shield the crank handle is going in um, and then wheel assembly make eight pieces oh my lord so <laughs> it's we're, we're making eight eight wheels up and um, it it looks like the inner uh, rim and the tires are separate uh, or there, there's um, looks like two halves doesn't it, it looks like you've got uh, a tire with a set of spokes in and then there's an, a second set of spokes that goes on the other side to give you that um, effect of the spokes being wider than the wheel at the hub um, but it's asking you before you put the second set in to put um, a little valve in uh, for your air so wow so you've got part b8 is valves that's going to be microscopic i'll be interested to try and find that part b8 i'll try and remember um, then we are putting the wheels on we've got some more spare wheels going on the top so that's a stack of three in total don't know whether it's one double and one single uh, quite possibly um, and then we flip over um, and these are all uh, painting figures so 43 steps to build it um, and then we've got some uh, in-depth painting markers so you need to cross-reference these as you go that's really nice isn't it right let's have a look at the uh, that's a really good set of instructions that's cracking that uh, right so the Manera number seven um, so it gives you all four um, paint aspect views um, these are early equipped versions for some reason they weren't equipped with a machine gun shield all right or rear mug guards okay they had a narrow engine hood and one or two spare wheels these maneuvers did not yet have the port storage box right okay then we go to this one Lion of Flanders I quite like that that, that might be the way I go um, and it says early 1915 all armor cars were ordered to paint over their numbers this in this is visible on photos as darker patches where the name auto uh, Miner and whatever it is and Minerva number was previously stenciled in that period all the Minervas had a machine gun shield in this case the rounded version still no stowage box and early engine okay so it's got a sort of curve to the uh, machine gun plate um, and we've got a darker gray patch where they've painted over their their numbers so yeah I uh, interesting see they know exactly what they're talking about gives you a lot of trust doesn't it um then 19 classic markings for the minerva armored car this is the most standard look of the minerva uh, was painted on both sides of the body but there were two spots for this sign on the front part of the body or the rear part of the body some same goes for the machine gun shield where both commonly used in early years of the war, the port storage box is present and the engine hood is still the early type. Okay, so even though it showed four paint schemes on the outside of the box, we've actually got one, two, three options already on what looked like the first paint scheme. So three options. Fourth option. Um, I'm a car with registration number late 15, early 16. Several manoeuvres were given painted registration numbers during the war. Okay, so that's that on. Uh, that one doesn't appeal to me quite so much. So that's, is that four now? Five. Camouflage manoeuvre, 1916. Some manoeuvres, probably those 
from cavalry divisions, with, which probably also had all four Belgian uh, Lanchesters receive their three colour camouflage. No additional stencils are visible. Note the late engine hood interior is probably grey. Okay, so just applied to the outside. Um, yeah, okay, but you've got all the storage boxes um, and the, the later large shield on there. Now that would be really interesting because there's actually um, all those colours, those three colours, they all get divided by a black line. So the best way to, to do that is to go around with a paint pen when you've done. <laughs> yeah. I, that one appeals to me other than you've not got any markings on, um, which detracts, so that spoils me a bit. Right, option six. Uh, German captured one, so you've got the manoeuvre markings, you're adding a couple of uh, Baltic crosses, um, different gun, different shield, and um, an extended um, cover over the engine. They didn't like the gaps. Um, then we've got two, another two, so uh, what's that, six and seven, is it? Um, one is 1918 Belgian Army, and then you've got another one, which is the, the police one we've seen. So a lot more paint options than it, it first appeared. Um, then there's a replica, a project to build a replica, and it's showing you how they've gone about that. Okay, interesting. And then the team that did it. Wow, that is fantastic. Let's hope the plastic measures up to the instructions. But before we look at the plastic, let's look at the decals. They come in a little Ziploc bag, which is brilliant because you've got somewhere nice and tidy to put them as you start cutting through into these. Um, they are cartograph, so we know that they're going to go down really well. Um, yeah, they don't have excess uh, decal film. There is some, obviously, where you've got writing, you get decal film, uh, it's the nature of the beast. Um, but what they've done is, you might not be able to see this quite so clearly, but between each letter there's a sag to minimise the amount of decal film. So we've got our German markings there, the Minerva uh, markings. You've got separate numbers, so you could do number seven or four or whatever. And that follows through in different sizes and then you've got the the belgian marking which obviously is um each half goes on one of the shutter doors in front of the radiator so that's why it's in two halves yeah nothing wrong with that that's a lovely lovely set of decals and leaves you with some first world war style markings that you could might be able to use on other things so you could easily cut off uh, these letters and things and use them on uh, all sorts of stuff dioramas and what have you and then our two little um, options for the dials there I mean look at the size of them they're, they're tiny you can't see that one is moving and one's not actually actually I've only got my reading glasses on and I can so I tell a lie um, yeah nothing wrong with those decals really nice so I'm gonna start with the bag that's got the wheels in and we've got two sprue which are spokes only and then two which are tires and spokes and oh my gosh look at how lovely that is that is a real thing of beauty the spokes are stunning and then you put the other side on there like so that is going to look so authentic I, that impresses me i was sort of expecting those to be photo etch that is absolutely stunning um, so as I look at them, uh, we've got some seam on the tyre, but it's minor, um, but you've got these little grooves in the tyre, so a bit of careful clean up with a little bit of wet and dry, I think, is the way to go on that. I wouldn't even be touching the spokes, they look fine. Um, and then we've got this spoke that goes in, um, and there's a little location notch so that you get it in the correct place position and the spokes are correctly aligned front and back so that's really nice there's a little bit of flash on that one there and let's have, just have a look see if it's no I don't see it on that one 
about it yet it's in the set uh, yet so all of these will have a little bit of flashing tiny 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 very careful um scraping out with a sharp sharp blade or something like that just to tidy that up um, i think that's the inside wheel anyway so your other option is to just give it a little bit of a clog up with mud and you'd never notice it but they are they are stunning i am deeply impressed with those right we have two sprue bees and wasn't that the sprue that had the um uh valves on there we go part eight valves that is mad isn't it and i i can just see it but i'm guessing you can't at the very end of the valve it actually steps in and goes even <laughs> even thinner that is beautiful um that is definitely a paint it on the sprue cut it off and get it on quickly before you lose it <laughs> um yeah and then we've got uh wheel hubs we've got the lamps they're really nicely done they've they've got um a bulb in the middle um so that's really nice then we've got brackets um these will be for the running boards no doubt we've got the um sections for the spare wheel um so the lower one is in four sections so you've got two sections there two sections on the other sprue and then the others that sit above that um uh, come out of the uh, other sprues we've just seen so the the join isn't as big an issue because i don't think you're actually going to see it it's just actually for bulking up because there's no center to it it's a it's a tire only isn't it um and then we've got the machine gun um mount so we end up with two of those i think that's the machine gun mount isn't it or it might be part of the uh, might be part of the rear suspension uh, and then we've got the radiator door there so again wherever you've got multiples they appear to have put it onto here but there's nothing wrong with those i'll take some photographs and you can have a proper good close look right sprue d um and we've got all sorts of different parts on here so the sprues aren't necessarily laid out so that when you're building the the chassis you've got one sprue and the engine one sprue they're sort of spread around wherever they seem to to make sense when they're designing them so we've got the two uh different machine gun shields there there's actually three in total these are these are the two flat ones although there is a gentle curve to that that german one um then that's our gun stand isn't it which is in two halves uh, and we've got some of the brackets that go within the chassis that's the uh, front face armored face of the um, engine cover uh, where the radiator is with the little hinge doors and then we've got the gearbox there um, steering wheels got some nice levers on so that's some lovely detail uh, handbrakes quite nicely done those yeah uh, and even the, the fan belt doesn't look too heavy. Um, and look, I don't know if you can see that, but there is little holes in there. So very, very nicely done. Nice detail on the guns also. They'll paint up nicely. And obviously we've got separate handles and things. And whichever one you're not using, you've got some, some armament for your stash. Yeah, very nice. Very, very nice. Sprue A, and we've got, well, the large parts in the middle are our two chassis frames, uh, the side pieces, and then we've got um, we've got those springs for the rear suspension. They're nice, really nicely done. And I can feel the uh, grooves between the springs. So they'll come up nice on a wash. Um, we've got the steering column. A little bit of heavy seam on there, almost like flash. A gentle scrape and that'll be cleaned up um, same with our front axle there um, the drive shaft and then our two engine blocks and then we've got our radiator which is a front and back two-part assembly um, I can feel really fine detail on that really really nice very very nice so outer face 
inner face and then this last early type curved um, machine gun uh, shield I quite like the look of that I've done a good job of that Last grey sprue is E, um, and that's got, well, we've got our um, side pieces here, and there's lots of nice raised fastener detail there. Um, and then we've got the, um, this is the where the spare wheel goes, sort of the, the casing that goes around it. And again, we can see nice panel lines and fastener detail. Um, and we've got the rear mudguard assembly there with that back plate. This is our engine cover. No ejector pin marks in any of this, or certainly not where they're seen. There's a couple in places, but not where you're going to see it. That's our, well, that is the dashboard. Um, yeah, um, and then we've got our floor there, which is nicely done with panel lines some fastener detail some little tiny details in there so that is lovely um, that outer curved outer wall there which has got detail on the inside so that should paint up nicely as well doesn't feel like we've got any sink in there so that's all good um, then we've got all these stowage boxes fuel tank um, so all the clips and things are molded in they're not photo etched but they're done with a nice level of finesse so they'll look all right when you paint them up and wash uh, machine gun handles and uh, bracket and then we've got lovely detail on the inside of the mud guards and running boards all one piece very nicely molded that all looks good doesn't it um, and we've got plank detail on the underside which is also nice and we can see the detail of the inside of the walls here so again we've fashioned the detail a little bit of clean up there's a little lip around the openings um, which is not intended it's from the molding process so yeah very very nice I can see our little lamp here let's look at the clear parts two little clear sprues this one is for the larger lamp and it is beautifully clear really really nice um, and what they've done is they've it's quite a thick part and they've just put a heavy chamfer on it um, so when you actually look at it it looks very authentic actually looks really authentic so when that go that that chamfer is about the depth of the uh, inside of the light ring so you paint that inside of the light ring brass and it'll just it'll just look right I think um, but yeah that's a lovely clear part and then we've got the headlamps and and they're not quite as clear somehow and in fact that one may have a slight scratch in it yeah it does um, it can be polished out so it's not a biggie um, but can you see how it looks just ever so slightly milky, slightly foggy? Um, and it's the same with the frame, so um, it's the, the whole thing. Now, when you actually come to put it on, that'll, that'll largely disappear. Um, but, yeah, the, no distortion, nicely done. There's only one flow of plastic into the through the sprue gate. So you've got no spider in. Yeah, they look fine. They look really good. Just need to give it a bit of a polish because I've got a scratch, but obviously that's not going to be on all of them. So there you have it. CSM's 1 to 35 scale Belgian Minerva armoured car. What are my first impressions? Well, I've got to say um, it's a really impressive kit and I think it gets the balance right. There's no photo etch in there, it's all the art of the tool maker for making the plastic parts. And uh, that was that's refreshing because when I saw the kit, um, 
and I saw those, I thought that there's bound to be photo etch spokes. And my experience with photo etch spokes is, you know, um, you have to you have to put a shape to them because they're not flat. They, they, they come out to meet the um, ends of the uh, of the centerpiece there, the hub. Um, and so you've got to shape them, and that often misshapes them, and then you can't get them in the in the tire. And there's a whole host of issues you can get trying to put photo etch spokes in a wheel. Believe me. So the fact that they have spent the time in getting that right in the plastic is the highlight of the kit for me, is those, is those wheels. They're absolutely stunning. The rest of the kit, nicely detailed. Um, they have thought through how it's going to go together. They've certainly done their research and their instructions are beautifully thorough and the i only questioned the build sequence of one element of it so i'm really quite happy with it so um i th i think that is a stunning kit and they give you loads and loads of of op options um downside well the the um headlamp lenses uh, were uh, well I'm not quite sure where they're used because but they were a bit milky but um other than that I can't say there was anything there that made me think, oh, that's a that's a point off. So the fact that they they have not put photo etched detail in, some people perhaps would have preferred photo etched um, buckles uh, to go on some of the uh, stowage uh, and maybe photo etched hinges and stuff. But to be honest, they've done it with such finesse that it, it really doesn't need it. So it won't be a difficult build from the point of view of uh, just building the kit. Um, it's very, very different. It's quite a unique subject, uh, and that's always a plus point. So when I've come to think about it, we've got great instructions. We've got a really nice, crisply molded kit with lots of detail that's going to be... Um, relatively simple or not overly complicated to build you've got cartograph decals uh, you know what um that uh, that's full marks that's full marks as a kit everything you need for that kit there um all you need is to think about how you want to display it do you want some figures is it going on a diorama but everything else is in there and loads and loads of marking options and different build options so i think it's beautiful I really enjoyed reviewing that. I'm looking forward to building it uh, at some point. That's a stunning kit. Well done, CSM. Um, increasingly my favourite uh, model kit manufacturer. I hope that was useful. Um, and if you uh, enjoyed that, don't forget to give us a thumbs up because that just helps the channel out. And um, I will see you very soon. You enjoy your modelling. Bye for now.